Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and in the pantheon of gaming gods, alongside Mario, Link, and obviously Blinks the Time Sweeper, there's a special seat reserved near the very head of the table with a steaming chili dog awaiting its patron. Sonic the Hedgehog, he's as embedded into the video game industry as a tick on his bloody fur. That being said, Sonic hasn't exactly had a smooth ride to the top, and as you'd expect for a being constantly in motion, sometimes the franchise has had a few stumbles and trips, Sega has sometimes put the poor hog in hot water, and just prayed that his speed alone will carry him through to better times. Well, we don't forget, my friends. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight things that Sega wants you to forget about Sonic the Hedgehog. Number eight, he's only blue because of branding. One of the facets about Sonic's design that immediately sticks out, aside from the fact that his eyes don't appear to be separate, which is just plain creepy, is that he is most certifiably blue. So blue, in fact, that Eiffel 65 pays him for royalties for their song. So the question raised is, why blue? Well, if you're to ask any of the Sonic design team or the higher-ups of Sega, it's not because blue is the inverse of Mario's red, but because blue creates a calming presence. The former head of Team Sonic and series lead Yuji Naka once stated that blue was chosen because it represents peace, security, and thanks to its connection with water, makes one think of cool and relaxing things. Ah, that's nice, isn't it? It's a shame that it's utter rubbish, though, because it turns out the real reason that Sonic is blue is because of Sega's blue branding, and they wanted a mascot to mirror their logo. The other implications? Well, that's just a bonus. Number 7. He's had more than one human romance Try as hard as I might, I cannot scrub the utter horror show image of Sonic kissing Princess Elise in Sonic 06 from my brain. And while I'm sure that it was an awakening moment for furries around the world, it was a moment that made my skin invert so hard that it peeled from my very bones. Yet, apparently, this wasn't the first human female to have locked lips with Sonic. As way back way, in his original concept art no less, he was pitched alongside a woman known as Madonna, who was, according to the design team, meant to represent the ideal male fantasy. Whether through fear of looking like it was chasing Mario's tail, or the fact that the damsel in distress motif was a dated concept even back in the early 90s, this was dropped pretty quickly. However, the real fact that Sega wants you to forget about both of these romances is the fact that Sonic is meant to be 15 years old. Yes, that's right, they've officially stated that he doesn't age and that he's meant to be around 15 years old. Yeah, that changes things somewhat, doesn't it? Look at that kiss again from Sonic 06 and doesn't it reek of even greater creepiness? Number 6. He's not actually that fast at all While the term gotta go fast might well be burned into our collective memory thanks to relentless branding and even more relentless memes, it may come as a bit of a shocker to learn that Sonic himself isn't actually that fast at all. Now I know that you might be looking at footage of Sonic running on screen and saying, no Jules, you are most definitely wrong here, buddy. This blue boy is melting speed cameras around the bloody world. Well, to that, I would say look a little closer at his feet, as these are actually the real star of the show. If you see these Nazi sneakers aren't just fashionable footwear, as according to the original game's manual, these are the true source of his speed, being magical in nature as well as protecting his feet from wear and tear. It's a factor that Sega has downplayed quite a lot since this point was made, labelling this as incorrect and ignoring it going forward. However, this was Sonic's debut game, and as such is likely a factor that was planned during development. After all, you don't just make shoes that eye-catching for no reason. It was likely changed because having magical shoes does somewhat take something away from the character, especially when you think that it's one of his most defining features and now, according to this, isn't actually his own. Number 5. He can't swim because Yuji Naka doesn't know biology now, if we're being honest, the biological makeup of Sonic the Hedgehog is one that is at complete with that of a real-life hedgehog. For a start, I'm pretty sure they're not blue, and of course they can't run at speeds breaking the 700 miles per hour plus barrier. But there is actually one thing that real-life hedgehogs certainly can do that Sonic can't, and that is swim. Everyone is aware of how terrifying it is to see Sonic gasping for breath in the underwater sections of this game, and that horrible sound effect signaling your impending doom might well be the alarm clock buzz of Satan himself. Still, it turns out that the reason that Sonic sinks rather than swims like other mascots of the time is because Yuji Naka just out and out thought that hedgehogs couldn't swim. Imagine creating a character as off the wall as Sonic and then grounding yourself in this one very specific piece of reality. Still, as tense and horrible as the underwater sections are, as a result, at least they're very memorable, which in this industry goes a long way. Number 4. He's actually Bill Clinton Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting 
suggesting that Sonic is in fact Bill Clinton, merely that the former US president was indeed an inspiration point for the character. Now, it might be hard to spot seeing as the sax-loving Clinton looks nothing like a hedgehog last time I checked, but it was his attitude and more specifically a campaign slogan that Team Sonic took note of. The concept of approaching things head-on was very much the focus of Clinton's campaign, with him promising hard solutions to even harder problems, winning him a ton of support as a person who actually looked prepared to roll up his sleeves and get stuck in. And these were exactly the characteristics that the Sonic design team were looking for and so adapted this can-do, will-do attitude for their protagonist. Still, despite Sonic's direct approach, Sega was suitably less keen to attach his name to the impeached Bill Clinton going forward. And the uh, less said about the connotations of tails popping up from beneath Sonic in the splash opening for Sonic 2, the better. Number 3. The original game contains a middle finger to Sega If there's one thing that all developers and publishers are painfully aware of in this day and age, it's that disgruntled employees with a platform are a dangerous thing, as social media and public backlash can doom a company overnight. Therefore, Sega probably weren't too happy about people knowing that the original Sonic game actually contains a rather pointed barb directed at them from Yuji Naka. You see, at this point in time, Sega were dead against producers and designers getting their names featured in credits at the end of the title, with their reasoning being that this was meant to be a project separate from those that made it. Obviously, this went down like a lead balloon with the actual designers of the game, and so Yuji Naka took it upon himself to go against orders and programmed in the names of his co-workers. And he did so in a rather clever way, in that they were featured on a black screen at the start of the game in black text, which would only be revealed with a code. It's true that Sega might not have noticed, but they certainly would want you to forget this clash of ideals regardless. Number 2. The Lost World's Bizarrely Aggressive Language Ah, the good old dark age of Sonic, the period in which Sonic was truly in the doldrums of his career, chucking everything at the wall to see what stuck, but in place of good ideas was just a load of dog feces. The amount of subpar titles that came out in the mid to late 2000s was utterly shocking, and for many it seemed like the blue blur was just becoming a tad too desperate to stay relevant. There was no gimmick that Sonic would pass up, from turning into a werehog to connect base racing titles, and of course, that time that he jumped into fantasy storybooks in order to battle medieval knights. And on top of this slew of slop, one title especially stuck out, but not for the right reasons. Sonic Lost World, despite its cutesy aesthetics, actually earned itself a much higher ESRB rating than nearly every other Sonic title, all thanks to the questionable language that was used within. Classic quotes like, you're going home in a box, I'm going to skin you alive, and as long as I can strangle a zetty my hand are fine, littered the game and audiences, well, they reacted as you'd expect. It felt totally out of place to see these edgy lines within a very kid-focused title, and it's something that Sega has been keen to avoid ever since. And number one, that Sega was the real reason that Sonic 06 sucked so much. Now, Sonic 06 may well be regarded as one of the worst video games ever made, and when you consider that Animal Soccer World and Little Britain the video game are in that same bracket, that is a bad look for the once proud mascot. Nearly every single aspect of the game's release was an utter nightmare, from the collision detection that failed hilariously at its job, to the god-awful voice acting, horrendous plot, and of course the fact that the game would bug out so much that it resembled a roach motel with a no vacancy sign lit up on it. So the question on everyone's lips was, how could Sonic have been messed up so badly? Well, my friend, it's all down to Sega themselves. Through colossal mismanagement and a strict demand that the game would be launched on Sonic's 15th anniversary, Sega ignored the fact that the initial development team had been downsized to less than half than when the game began production and pressed ahead telling the world that this would be the next big thing. Now, in truth, it was a big thing, it's just a shame that that thing was utter garbage. So much content was cut to make the game ready for launch, including hub worlds, an expanded story, and a whole arsenal of moves. Come the months before its release, Team Sonic could only cobble together what they had and try to make it stable. Requests by them to delay the game were flatly denied, and because of this, Sega doomed the title to become one of the most reviled in recent memory. Cheers for that. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight things that Sega wants you to forget about Sonic the Hedgehog. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself with love and respect, because you bloody well deserve it, all right? And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive ledge, and 
you deserve all the best things in life and I want you to just go out there and smash your life goals today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.